You're listening to Clarity on Fire, a podcast for people who know what they don't want out of their life and career, but aren't sure what they'd rather be doing. In a world where it's easy to exist, but hard to feel alive, we, Kristen and Rachel, two certified life and career coaches, are here to help you cut through the information overload, get unstuck, and focus not just on how you can have a career you're passionate about, but how to create a whole life that feels fulfilling. So join us here, where we serve up inspiration and down-to-earth wisdom in a way that only two best friends can. We want you to experience the relief of knowing that, yes, you're allowed to want more out of your life and career. And no, you don't have to wander through the dark anymore. Our job is to light the fire that shows you the way. Let's go. Hi. Hey. Well... This is the episode that you should have heard last month, but then I spilled tea on my MacBook. That was a rough week for me. You weren't sure ever... it was going to be salvageable. Yeah, that's right. It was. And now I just... Ha- well, it's it's limping. I have to use an external keyboard now because my keys are so stuck and I have to keep it plugged in at all times. Honestly, it was kind of... The battery was bad before this, but... I wasn't forced to go buy a new computer that day, and I'll take that as a win. And no one wants to have to like buy a new MacBook unexpectedly because of you want to be able to. <laughs> well, for any reason, you don't want to have to like spend that much money without knowing that you were going to have to spend that much money. You know, that's just mm-hmm. it's not a. It was not anyway. So, apologies to Kara. For us making her wait a month for her episode to come out. But maybe this is just when you were supposed to hear this episode. And who are we to say what the timing of the universe entails? We're trusting. We trust the timing in all other ways. Why not when it comes to tea on computers? (laughs) Well, I try to trust the timing in all other ways. I don't know that I actually do. (laughs) In theory, yes. Anyway, okay, so... Why don't you read Kara's bio? Okay. Kara is an ISTJ, a thriver, and an Enneagram type 9. I always love how our people tend to introduce themselves with all of their assessment results because they know that that's what we're all about. Yep. She's also a civil engineer, a single mom of two, and an amateur gardener, chef, and chicken collector. Love that. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> who left her full-time job as an engineering manager almost two years ago to embark on an eight-month sabbatical and rediscover her purpose. She discovered her passion for financial coaching after going through her own journey to pay off debt and helping several friends get their own finances in order. She's now on a mission to help women build healthy money habits so they can eliminate debt, build wealth, and start living the good life, whatever that may mean for them. You can find her at TGL dash FC stands for the good life financial coaching dot com. That is quite an eclectic collection of interests, financial coaching, a chef, gardener, and collecting chickens. (laughs) It's the thriver life for her. I love it. And yeah, we talk about that. And we talk about lots of things about what it's like being a woman in a field that has not historically been super welcoming or energetically aligned for a woman and oh god getting to the point where she could take an a sabbatical i did ask her like could you please tell us like very specifically what you did because i would like to live vicariously through your eight month she was like i took a lot of naps that's the spoiler alert and i was like ah oh. I'm here for that. Sounds really nice. And she just like stood outside and watched chickens. So, um, and we talked about money stuff too. So there's something for everyone in this episode and we hope you will enjoy and follow Kara. We'll give her, I mean, we'll remind you of her stuff at the end and we'll be back for a brief outro at the end. Hey, Kara. Hi, Rachel. How are you? I'm great. I'm glad to have you here. Well, thank you so much. <laughs> you you appeared at a very like synchronous time when I was I was like I need someone for the podcast and you just emailed me an update and I was like 
Well, there she is. She's coming on the podcast. Well, I did ask, but you yeah, did say the, yes. <laughs> the universe poked its head up and said, it did. Here, here you go. Exactly. The time was perfect. So, mm -hmm. okay. There's so much that I want to get into with you because I think you might be the first. Oh, gosh. I hope I'm not saying this wrong and then someone's going to be mad at me. <laughs> if I do, please forgive me, whoever I'm offending right now. <laughs> I think you might be the first engineer I've interviewed for the hmm. podcast yeah yeah I've, I've listened to almost all your episodes and I don't recall hearing you yeah talk to an engineer so it could be so I mean I start there because that's a huge part of your story of how you got to where you are which is you are not necessarily I don't know are you an engineer for life I feel like you are I feel like once you're an engineer you can't really not be <laughs> even if you're not necessarily pursuing it as a career any longer yes which I know is not your main focus anymore mm -hmm. but it's a huge part of how you got here so i feel like we yeah. have to go back and talk about that yeah absolutely so yeah i mean i i got into engineering through my dad actually he was a civil engineer and i got to the end of high school and i said well what am i going to major in and i didn't really know what would be a good fit for me but i um was good at math and you know he was a good provider for us. The engineering career really, we were able to do all the types of things that I wanted to be able to do for my kids, go on vacations and, you know, just all those types of things, like have the kind of life that you, you imagine when you're growing up. So, so I just went into, went into that uh, in college. And when I graduated, I actually went to work with him at the company that he had been working at since the year before I was born, actually. <laughs> So he was kind wow. of a lifer there. Um, That's a very like baby boomer thing to do. Yes. For the most part, right? Is, Absolutely. Is, and it's like an option they had that I don't think we really have. It doesn't happen anymore no, for us it, to work at the same company for 20 years or 25 right. years. Yeah, there's there's definitely something to that. It's, it seems like everybody, you know, his brothers and sisters, all kind of whatever career they chose, they went into it and they just stayed there just, forever. Yeah. So. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. So you were like, well, yeah. I'm good at math. Mm -hmm. I don't know what else to do. This right. is a family like career. It's almost like, you know, my dad was a butcher. So I'm a butcher or yes. my mom was a librarian. So I'm a librarian. <laughs> Your dad was an engineer. So you were an engineer. Right. Right. Yeah. So I, I went and I worked with him for about the first 15 years after college. And then I had decided that it was time to move on from there. So I left and went to work for another firm for another six years after that. But I, you know, I guess I would say I definitely enjoyed parts of the job, but there was always just something about it that I just felt like it wasn't a perfect fit for me. You know, I just, I didn't know why I didn't know anything about, you know, feminine and masculine energy back then. <laughs> I didn't know, you know, all these things. I just felt like, gosh, I think there's probably something I'd rather be doing, but I don't know what it is and I don't know how to figure it out. And, you know, I don't know. I'm just going to stay here until I do figure it out, I guess. So. Mm -hmm. So, OK, I don't know if this is yet the time for us to talk about this, but mm -hmm. you said it. So I feel like we should maybe talk about it. The whole feminine masculine energy thing. Yeah. When you and I were coaching, that was one of the biggest things that I think made you confident you needed to take a break ultimately and like have a sabbatical was because engineering is so, so, so like historically a very heavily masculine kind of trade. Absolutely. Yeah. And it's run by people who do not understand or comprehend anything other than rigidity and structure. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. you work this time to this time. There's no exceptions. Like it's not a very welcoming place for a woman who has children, little kids, right? And who is not wired in that way, mm -hmm. and who wants to like have work life balance, and maybe wants to have the audacity to rest sometimes. <laughs> and you had been doing it for twenty years in that yes. kind of very like toxic masculine type environment and it's mm -hmm. it's impressive that you made it that long before you were like i need a sabbatical yeah yeah you know i 
um, looking back on it, I sometimes wonder how I used to have the energy to, to do it, all everything that I used to do, you know, going to work all day and then coming home. And I was, I was really the primary caretaker of our kids. Um, but just my life now is so far removed from that, that it's hard for me to put myself back in that place and think, you know, how did I used to wake up at 4.30 in the morning and, you know, so that I could get everything done that needed to be done in the day. And, um, but yeah, it's definitely, I think that was a big reason for that disconnect that I felt is, you know, engineering is very much a, especially when you get to the management level, it's, you know, go out and kill something and drag it home and, you know, make the, make the work come in the door instead of kind of, there just, I guess, isn't, I haven't seen anybody work in a way that is like, you let things come to you. You have to go out there and make it happen or it's not going to happen, you know, when it comes Mm -hmm. to getting clients and projects and all those kind of things. So, um, and yeah, I think just, you are expected to to put your job first. A lot of companies expect that. Yeah, it's a very masculine field for sure. Not just because there's men working no, there. The, right, the energy, yeah. the the system, the structure. Right, right. And, and working with men, you know, per se, like I never had an issue with that. And I mean, if I'm being honest, I really have always been more comfortable around men. I've not usually had a whole lot of um, female friends, you know, maybe one or two through school and those kind of things. But, um, and I don't, I don't know what the reason for that is necessarily, but (laughs) (laughs) that's a whole other tangent we could go down. (laughs) I know. Yeah. I just say that because like, it wasn't, um, you know, working with, with men that caused any kind of discomfort for me. You know, I'm Mm -mm. perfectly fine going out in the field, out to a job site and doing inspections or whatever needs to be done. And that's, I've never been made to really feel uncomfortable in that environment. But I do think the, um, um, the hunter gatherer aspect of the job was something that maybe was, didn't always resonate with me. Well, and the expectations on you as like a full-time working mom when I'm sure I'm positive because you're in Texas right Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yes and so I know a lot of those men you were working with had a woman they were married to who was home taking care of their children yes you did not have like that wasn't your experience no yeah my husband and, and I at the time um you know, we both worked full time more than full time. And, uh, you know, luckily we did have some good um, family connections that were able to help us with the kids when we both had to to do things, whether after work or whatever the case was. Um, but, yeah, it was it's tough. Yeah. To a point, you're just surviving. I think that's mm-hmm. kind of how you did it for 20 years it, or more is you didn't really think you just did. Like, yeah, there was no choice but to wake up at four thirty in the morning and right. do all the things that needed to be done and go to work. Mm-hmm. And so, yeah, when you're on autopilot like that, you just keep going and going and going, and eventually it catches up to you, which is what yes. happened. Yes, absolutely. I I definitely towards the end there, especially um, had started having some just physical symptoms, migraines, um, mm-hmm. a lot, a lot of upset stomach. I even had, you know, heart palpitations, panic attacks. Mm. <laughs> like, it was getting pretty bad towards the end. And now that I've been away from that for a couple of years, I'm much better. I couldn't tell you the last time I had a migraine, you know, it's, it's pretty Amazing. dramatic. I love the just anecdotal proof right there that the level of stress and misalignment that we're under creates so much physical dis-ease in mm-hmm. our bodies. Yeah. And that when we are living a life that's more in alignment with us, oh, shocker, a lot of that dis-ease <laughs> uh, dissipates. Right. Right. Uh, okay. So when I met you, you were on the brink of taking a sabbatical. Yes. You were like, I think... You, you knew even before we had our first session that you wanted to do that. 
it just hadn't started yet. Am I right, right. about that? Yes. Yeah. So I, okay. <clears throat> I guess when I really started thinking, you know, I think I could, I could make this happen. I like mm-hmm. a sabbatical had been just like a pipe dream for a long time, but I just never thought there's no way I can afford that. You know, how am I going to support myself to even be able to take off maybe a couple of months or whatever? You know, the only time I had experienced anything like that was, you know, when I took off 12 weeks for maternity leave, you know, each time I had my kids or whatever. So, which is not a break. Let's (laughs) be clear. That's not a break. (laughs) Right. Right. That was just the closest thing to a sabbatical, I guess. I had ever experienced. Which is sad it because is. it's it is. really hard <laughs> to have a newborn baby. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, but no, so it when it was when the pandemic hit, actually, um, you know, the company that I was working for at the time, um, you know, like everybody, they were scrambling. They didn't know what to do. They sent everybody home. Um, but you know, what what was kind of disappointing and what really kind of started my, uh, started me down the path of, um, considering whether I could make a sabbatical happen was, you know, the way that they handled the pandemic, um, you know, they pretty quickly wanted everybody back in the office. Like, like I'm talking June, July of Mm, 2020, a whole three months. Okay. Yeah. Right. And, um, And then, you know, with people that had actual legitimate reasons like, hey, I've got my elderly mother living with me or whatever the case may be, like they weren't comfortable for whatever reason returning to the office. They really were um, looked down upon. Um, It affected, um, you know, their bonuses. It affected, you know, like their futures at the company. And I was just really disappointed by that. They um, had previously tried to put off the message of great company culture and employee focused. And, um, and that was just so, I just felt it was so inauthentic. um, And it really just kind of changed my, my opinion of that company. And really, I was just like, yeah, I don't, I don't know what I want to do, but I don't think it's engineering anymore. Um, so, mm-hmm. yeah. So I, I started looking around. Um, I actually found you guys through a Facebook group that um, was related to Dave Ramsey. So I he's got all different personalities that talk about different aspects of life. And one of those is careers and finding the career that is a good fit for you. And so I was on that page one day and I was like, what else can I do? <laughs> what is my next job? What is my next career? Mm-hmm. And someone had um, posted a link to y'all's uh, passion profile quiz. And um, I'm a sucker for all kinds of personality <laughs> quizzes and tests and things. And so um, I took that and found out that I was a thriver. And all of a sudden, everything made sense you know (laughs) here I am Mm. just thinking that I am lazy because I don't want to work until seven o'clock every night and um you know I can't believe can I can I pause you for a second (laughs) I know we're like in a live conversation and I don't have to pause you but like I just hate that women are made to feel like a full-time working single mother Mm -hmm. at this point (laughs) Yeah. is made to feel lazy because she doesn't want to work until 7 p.m. every night and maybe doesn't want to have to wake up at 4 30 in the morning right. like this is what when we say like the culture is toxic and like this is what toxic masculine energy will wreak havoc you know like on us like, this is what we're talking about mm-hmm. that mm-hmm. there's no respect for a person's humanity absolutely that, productive like you are a vessel for productivity and you're being used and sucked dry (laughs) by the system and there's no regard for your life there's no regard for your personhood and and then we internalize it and we the that's where that's the most insidious part of it Mm -hmm. is if that's not bad enough then we 
take it personally and we internalize it and we go, oh, I must be lazy if I don't want to participate in this broken right. system. Yeah. I, I thought, what is wrong with me? You know, why yeah. can't I figure this out, you know, and, and be Ugh. there and want to <laughs> stay and get my job done? You know, no, it was it, looking back, it seems silly, but, but that's the, but that's very yeah. real. And you're one it of is. many, 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 many people who I've talked to and who many people I haven't, I'm sure mm-hmm. who feel that way. And yeah. who it's, it's a really, really, really great form of gaslighting. Yeah. Yeah. It boils down to it. It is. Absolutely. Okay. So we found out you're a thriver. Yes. yes. So it helped break some of the illusion (laughs) that maybe you weren't lazy. Maybe you just have a different value system that is not aligned with the, how you're working. Yeah. Yeah. 100%. And because it, I'm just classic thriver. I wanted to go to work and do my job and come home and and it wasn't that i didn't enjoy my job or didn't do it well you know i everywhere that i had worked well all two places that i had worked up to that point you know i had advanced um through the ranks and uh, you know i was an associate with my first firm and i was a vice president and a department manager with my second firm and um you know, I, I volunteered a bunch. I did, you know, all the engineering organizations in the area and, you know, but at the end of the day, I wanted to leave work at work and I wanted to come home and I wanted to, um, you know, be with my kids and do some vegetable gardening and play with my chickens and, (laughs) you know, all those kinds of things. You wanted your feminine energy met, your your needs for rest and rejuvenation and flow and balance and ease. Like, Mm -hmm and play yes. that that's totally reasonable of course yeah. i'm glad you right. i'm glad we finally you know you got to a point <laughs> where you realized that was not crazy to want or ask for yes yes so okay so after that you know let's see what was i saying oh yeah so i did the passion profile quiz um i went on to take your passion profile short course. And um, then I, y'all offered a single coaching session. I think that was like in January of 21. And then, so we did that one hour call and then Mm -hmm. I said, well, I want to do more coaching (laughs) because I need it. I got to figure out what I'm going to do. And so, yeah, so we went, went on down for, you know, went through the six month, um, coaching program. And I I can't believe it's been 2 years. Almost I know. Time since has did that. flown. Oh, yeah. I mean, okay. So, <laughs> I All right, I want to talk about you getting to the point where you felt comfortable taking a sabbatical because I think that your financial health and you working on that had probably a lot to do with you getting to the point where you were willing to do that for yourself. Yeah, absolutely. Which then obviously has a lot to do with what you're doing now. Yes. um, As a financial coach. (laughs) Um, But yeah, tell me about when you, I I guess, I don't know at what point, I don't remember at what point you decided, or I guess maybe you didn't decide, maybe Mm -hmm. life happened to you. And so you had to figure out the money situation. (laughs) Yes. But yeah, tell us about how yes. you decided to get into your financial health and cleaning that up. Okay. So, um this is going to go way back to 2015. Um my husband at the time left and um it took us gosh about a year and a half before the divorce was final. Um so that was definitely not a fun time, but Coming out of all of that, um, I stayed in our house because I wanted our kids to have that familiar place where they have always grown up that um, I'm definitely big on. Um, Security is one of the things that I really value um, for myself, and I wanted to make sure that my kids felt comfortable and were not having to move their primary home. Um, So I stayed in the house. Um, I kept, um, so I basically, I kept more of the assets, but I also kept more of our debt to kind of offset so that things would be even. Um, 
And so basically, you know, my, my income, we made pretty similar income. So from my perspective at that time, before I really dug into how do I do this was my income has been cut in half. I have almost all the same bills. How in the world am I going to be able to do this? And, Mm. um, you know, so talking with some friends, they actually um, were the first people that introduced me to Dave Ramsey and his program. And, um, you know, for anybody who's not familiar with him, he has his radio show where people call in and ask questions about finances and he answers them. He's not everyone's cup of tea, but um, I like to take the things that resonate with me and work for me. And um, so using his kind of methods, um, I was able to pay off uh, within three years, I paid off all of my debt except for my house. And I had um, saved up a good um, chunk for an emergency fund. And I was saving for my kid's college. Um, and then the other thing that I realized once I um, was starting down the road of, I want to take a sabbatical, how can I make this happen, was I was a shareholder with the company that I worked for at that time. And in order to become a shareholder, you had to buy in, um, purchase the shares from the company, and then you would get, you know, dividends, I guess, kind of every year um, from the profits that the company made. But um, as a, you know, I had been a shareholder for a couple of years. And so the value of my shares were much higher at that point than they were when I originally bought in. So I had, you know, a good chunk of money from that. I realized if I left the company, they would buy my shares back at that new higher value. And so that really was what set me up to be Mm -hmm. able to not work for, um, I guess it was a total of eight months that I was just completely off, off work. And, Mm -hmm. you know, I continued working with you during that time, but Mm -hmm. A lot of it was just laying on my bed and taking a lot of naps and (laughs) (laughs) decompressing and, um, you know, just doing whatever I felt like doing that day. Okay. All right. I have so many questions. Okay. Mm -hmm. Let's, okay. I want to talk about the money stuff, but let's circle back to that. Mm -hmm. And I want to talk about for a minute, the sabbatical first, Mm -hmm. I want to talk about even though you got your financial life very much in order and you felt good about it. And I know that as someone who's very security minded, like you crunched the numbers, there was no part of you that was like, can I afford to do this? Is this, like, I think that it wasn't a gamble in that sense. Like you knew right. what you were getting into mm-hmm. and were there any fears or, you know, things that came up in taking a sabbatical you know, I I think I did worry a little bit about, um, you know, what if I can't figure out how to make a living at anything else, which is looking back, that's kind of ridiculous. Of course, you can figure out how to make, make a living a some way. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I guess I had just been in that uh, engineering world for such a long time. And, you know, I knew I have a really good network of other people that, I mean, just people that I've volunteered with and those kind of things. And so leaving that behind was a little bit scary, even though I've kind of come back to it a little bit now working just part-time, but I don't know. Other than that, it was definitely an adjustment at first. I felt weird not getting up every morning and going through my usual routine. And so it took some time to kind of calm down and realize, okay, this is what we're supposed to be doing. (laughs) Cause that, you know, that little, those gremlins come, you know, like you should be doing something, you should be figuring this out. And, um, just telling myself that it's okay to sit down and do nothing for a while was, was one adjustment for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's what I, I feel like when you take something like a sabbatical after so long, And especially a very rigid, very heavily masculine kind of environment to then go and 
do the exact opposite of that is kind of shocking. It is, it was a shock to the system, I think. But, you know, it was weird at first and I had to definitely pay attention to my thoughts and not let myself go down that rabbit hole of I'm getting anxious. I need to be doing something. So, no, you don't. This is yes. the whole point. We planned on this. It's okay. So you don't have to be productive. This is the yeah. point. You can just yes. be. Yes, exactly. Oh, that's so nice. So tell us, I mean, for those people who are like, oh, I would love to take a sabbatical, but I can't. What did you do? Like, walk us through all the fun things. <laughs> Maybe not all of them, <laughs> but like, tell us what you did so that oh we can enjoy it and live vicariously through you. Yes. <laughs> um, so I, I have really gotten big into, I don't want to, I'm not a homesteader per se, but I've really fallen in love with gardening I have got uh, six chickens currently that roam around my yard. That's great because there's like an yeah. egg crisis, isn't yeah. there, or something it's, right there now? Is. I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> I don't there, the anymore. eggs are super expensive. <laughs> <laughs> That's um, so funny. <laughs> but just to like watch that, like I would just go outside and sit down, you know, in the grass and watch them scratch around and look for bugs. And, you know, there's just something about them that was so calming. <sighs> Um, yeah, but I definitely, there's no agenda. Yeah, exactly. They're just, they're just in the moment. They don't know that anything exists other than this moment. Right. There is something like meditative about right. watching creatures just be, and then mm-hmm. you get to pretend to be one of them. <laughs> like, right. Yeah. Oh, that's but funny. I, I also, um, so I actually did a big expansion of my garden. I guess I wasn't completely just laying around, you know, resting the whole time, but I um, expanded my garden. It's about 1800 square feet. And wow, that's um, huge, Kara. I didn't realize enormous. it was that big. <laughs> I need to see a picture of this. Oh yeah. Oh, well it's, it doesn't look very pretty right now being winter time, oh, but I will yeah, send you true. one when it's green and growing in bloom. Okay. Yes. Um, but yeah, so growing, you know, as all kinds of different vegetables, peppers, tomatoes, um, garlic, corn, squash, herbs, flowers, wow. um, just everything. And then of course you have way more than you can actually eat. So then I've been preserving, I do a lot of canning. So I put up a bunch of, you know, tomato sauce and, um, just whatever I could, you know, things in the freezer, vegetables and, and all that kind of thing. So that's fun. Um, what else did we do? My, um, Boyfriend helped me to remodel a, a little camper trailer that uh, my parents gifted to me. <laughs> so we totally gutted that and uh, refinished the inside and um, took it on a few camping trips while I was off. Um, I don't know. We just kind of did whatever we wanted. Went to the beach. Um, mm. Yeah. That's the dream. It is. To take naps. I to took garden. naps every day, <laughs> sometimes twice. <laughs> that's amazing. I mean, that's, yes. I wish, I wish we could all give ourselves an experience like that. Mm-hmm. Like, I wish yeah. it was possible for everyone to have like eight months where that's the only yeah. thing they do is they take naps and they play around in whatever they their garden or they <laughs> read books or they go on camping trips or they watch yes. their chickens And they're just being that is medicine for the soul. And you really needed it. I did. I did. It's, you know, I've my kids, um, they're a little bit older now. They're my son is 18. My daughter is almost 13. And they have both at different times just commented on how much happier and how much Mm. less stressed I am. And, um, you know, just so to be able to show them you don't have to go to work every day and be miserable. Like that is not what life is for. Like we should be, you know, I get to pick up my daughter and take her to school every day now. And that was something that I could never do before. And it's, it's just awesome to be able to be here for them. And, um, you know, I think this childhood, you know, it's the childhood that I would have wanted to provide for them if I thought it was an option. (laughs) when I was married, mm-hmm. you know? Mm-hmm. Um, so it's all been mm. wonderful. 
Mm-hmm. Okay. So as you were going through that time, we, you and I were also coaching mm-hmm. and we were working on, all right, well, what do I want to do now? I right. mean, and for a while I was very much team don't do anything, take naps and garden. Mm-hmm. And, but yes, then part of the reason you take a sabbatical is to clear your mind and to allow the right. path to unfold in front of you, whatever's happening next, allow ideas and inspiration to come to you. Mm -hmm. And that did happen. And then we started working on a new path being financial coaching. And so what do you think made you attracted to the idea of exploring it? Because we were, it's not like you were sure at first that this is something you wanted to do. Right. But you were curious about it and you wanted to explore it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. So I, you know, as I had gone through my own journey of paying off my debt, getting my finances um, in order, I I would pretty much tell anybody and everybody who would listen what I was doing because <laughs> I was just so excited about yeah. it. And whether they wanted to hear about it or not, I was talking mm-hmm. about it. So yeah, you became an evangelist. I it's did. What hap- I it's did. what happens when you love something and it's working. You talk yes. about it. Yeah. So you know, I, I got the chance that a couple of friends approached me about, Hey, can you help me look at my finances? Um, and this was before I ever even left my job. Um, but you know, I worked with those friends and I was able to watch their progress as they, um, you know, got their budgets right side up. They were in the black instead of the red every month. And they were able to start paying off debts and, um, you know, having just freeing up funds for whatever their goals were. And there was just something so it was fun, but it was so um, just satisfying and to watch them be able to do that and just to see that, oh my gosh, I'm going to be able to make it, you know, when they previously had felt like I'm just never going to get ahead. Um, So that I think is, is what does it for me is just watching other people, um, realize what they could do and understanding what's possible and, you know, have that sense of security for themselves that, you know, that was just the biggest game changer when I realized honestly how much better off I was after my divorce (laughs) financially than before. Um, Isn't that amazing to go from having a dual income to one income and then realizing I'm actually better off? Like that's astounding. Absolutely. It's, I never would have believed that it was possible, but, um, but yeah, it's, it's totally true. So. I think that you make a really good point about, I mean, anything we're really attracted to, it's not just because, oh yeah, I think money is fun and numbers are cool and I like budgets. It's, I like seeing people find freedom. I like seeing people find room in their life for things that they've previously thought were not possible. Mm -hmm. I mean, those are deep themes that you're attracted to and that you weren't necessarily getting met in engineering. Right. Yeah. You know, building a road doesn't quite have the same... (laughs) I mean, they're necessary, they're necessary, but it just doesn't quite do the same thing for me that (laughs) turning somebody's finances around does. Right. It doesn't have the same face to face, like personal impact that, yeah, turning someone's life around financially can have. And that's understandable. (laughs) Okay. So I know that this is not an expert interview, but I think that it would be cool if you want to share like, okay. Now that you're in the financial coaching game, what do you find are some people's like biggest, I don't know, hangups, maybe like blocks to getting started? So I think, you know, a big part of it is just people feel overwhelmed thinking about yeah. everything that they need to do. Um, yeah. And it's kind of like if I just ignore it, stuff it over in the corner you know i'm just not going to pay I'll attention deal with to that it later you know right or, yeah, i mean yeah it's it's really overwhelming there's so many yeah. things and decisions that feel like there need to be made right and if you right. don't know where to start yeah you just you yeah. just bury your head in the sand yeah right which 
inadvertently creates more anxiety because the longer yeah. you ignore something, the more you realize, hey, this is a problem. Like I'm going to have to deal with this at some point, you know? So mm-hmm. um, I think just being able to show them how to break it down, get organized, that it, it just alleviates a lot of that, you know, so that you can move forward and start taking steps. And I'd say maybe some of the other roadblocks or things that um, that keep people a little bit stuck is um, not wanting to make some of the maybe the lifestyle changes that mm-hmm. will help them uh, make progress more quickly. And it's not that you have to, you know, eat beans and rice forever. It's <laughs> <laughs> you don't ever have to eat beans and rice if you don't want to. But like, you know, it's just those small temporary lifestyle changes that um, will help you get, you know, help get money freed up in your budget and pay off some debts that frees up. You don't have that payment anymore. Now you got more money in your pocket. So, I mean, but yeah, I think mainly just the, it's just like this big, scary thing that just people don't want to, they'd rather just ignore it or they think Mm -hmm. it's normal to just always have a car payment or always have a credit card bill or um, Mm -hmm. can't go to college without student loans, you know? Um, Mm -hmm. So it's just opening up new perspectives, I think, and new new information that people hadn't considered sometimes. So when you said earlier, like, I try to help them get organized, what are some of the things that you initially do to help someone get more organized? Yeah. So the way I've designed my coaching program is, um, well, first, we just have like a quick 15-minute Q&A call just to make sure that the type of help that they need is, is what I provide. Um, cause I really, I don't do investments or anything like that. That all requires sure. special licensing and stuff. So, um, but then really the first big step is, um, I call it a discovery session and it's just a, a 90 minute meeting. We, um, break down, I have them fill out ahead of time, um, just an informational form and, um, I have them go back and look at their typical spending over the last few months and they fill out a spreadsheet with, um, you know, what is your rent? What is your car payment? You know, what debts do you have? Um, what are your bills? What kind of subscription services? What do you spend on groceries, dining out, shopping, um, all those kind of things. And then they also identify what is your primary, what is their primary, um, financial problem or issue that they want to work on? What keeps them up at night? What bothers them? And so, you know, if it's, um, the amount of debt that they have, well, we'll take a look and see how we can, what kind of changes can we make in your monthly spending to free up money, to throw at that debt, get it paid off and it, so that it goes away, you know, and it's, it might take some time, but, you know, it's like once you've got that plan laid out in front of you, then you just execute that plan. And, you know, it, a lot of times people will get really excited, really into it, and they'll start cutting more mm-hmm. in other areas. And then they pay it off way faster than they thought they ever could. So, yeah, it becomes like almost like gamified, right? Exactly. Like they start to see the reward in it. And right. it, yeah, it becomes fun to watch yeah. it like tick lower and lower to zero. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They watch that balance go down and, and then, you know, they, they pay their car off. Like that car is yours. Like, you know, I don't know. It's uh, again, you know, watching that change happen and watching them come to those realizations. um, It's just, it's really cool. I really enjoy it. (laughs) (laughs) I think it's a good point too, that to give them a focal point and an intention for like, okay, what is the thing that we're actually here to do? Because Mm -hmm. I think to your point about it being really overwhelming to approach your finances, it's just, it feels like there's a, there's so many different things I could be doing or focusing on. I'm glad that you say, okay, no, no, we're going to come up with like, what is your main goal here? Right. Which I know sounds so simple, but I don't know that people really think like that when they're thinking about getting their 
money in order or their budget in order. They're not right. thinking like, what am I here to do? Oh, okay. Yeah. My biggest priority is pay off my debt or my biggest priority is to like, save some more money so I can invest or something Mm -hmm. like that. Yeah. And that changes your strategy. It does. It does. Because I mean, just whatever you focus on is the thing that you'll, you'll make such faster progress focusing on one thing than trying to spread your money across, you know, paying off debt and saving for retirement and saving for college. Well, let's, let's do one thing at a time you know, and then once you get this first, once you pay off your debt, then let's move on and, and start looking at, you know, making sure you're saving at least something for retirement and then, you know, just on to the next priority. Okay. I like it. It's simple. When it you is. have help, right? <laughs> like yes, it's not, it's, it's not that complicated actually. <laughs> once it's we get not, over that really initial isn't. hurdle. Yeah. 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 So, and I think also okay. just having that accountability partner, yeah, someone that you're checking in with, you know, and you've got that Crucial. call on the calendar and, oh, I better get my homework done and, you know, keep my budget in line. And yeah. I'm telling you, I wish humans were like better at holding ourselves accountable, but that's just not how it works. I mean, we are way better when we have someone who knows that we should be doing something <laughs> and who's going to. It's going to check in when we, when they know we haven't. I mean, yeah. that's um, a lot of my job too. As yes, you know. <laughs> I, uh, there were a few times when I was like, oh, I've got my call with Rachel tomorrow. I better <laughs> finish my <Right>. homework. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, okay. So uh, this is a question that I occurred to me earlier in the conversation that I want to come back to, which is mm-hmm. what would you say to a woman who might be interested in getting into a field that's like heavily masculine after your experience. I don't want to turn people off. You know, I don't want mm-hmm. people to think like I can't explore that or I can't do that. Yeah. Um, well, you know, I guess whenever I think about when I was going into engineering, I didn't really ever question whether I could do it. Um, And I don't know if that, you know, partly I think that was just how I was raised um, to, to believe like you need to grow up and be independent. You don't need to, you know, I never wanted to depend on anyone else um, for providing the type of lifestyle that I wanted to have. Um, I just did what I could do. I took people's advice where it made sense to me. And definitely, you know, the connections, I think, that I've made in the industry through being involved with the professional organizations. um, That was one of the biggest things, I think, that contributed to my success as an engineer. Mm -hmm. Um, So it just opens so many doors. Um, You don't want to just go sit and at your desk and work for a company forever and never get out and nobody knows who you are. Um, But Mm -hmm. I don't know what else I would say. Just I I think uh, even when I was, you know, having kids and all of those kind of things, I just did what I needed to do. I didn't apologize for it. I might have felt in my mind, like, I don't know why this doesn't feel right to me, but I, that didn't stop me from, from doing the job that I was there to do. Um, I don't know if that's (laughs) helpful or not for people who are thinking about being an engineer, but I think just working on your confidence, having that confidence in yourself that you can do it and and learning what you need to to get there. I think that one of the big things that I don't want to gloss over about what you just said is the need for community. I think that anyone who's going into a field that's where they're going to be um, a minority of some kind. And I think, unfortunately, I think engineering is still one of those places where women yes, are not going to be the majority. Mm-hmm. 
especially not in Texas, <laughs> not, you yeah. know, not in your experience, right? <laughs> Very true. Um, that band together and like find community is a really important point mm-hmm. because as a, you know, as a lone person having that experience, I can, I'm sure that's incredibly lonely and intimidating and isolating, but if you're teaming up with other people or you're part of a, you know, a group or an organization, um, and maybe one that's like dedicated toward making more cultural changes to make it a better, more accommodating place for everybody, not just people who work well under masculine energy, right. then maybe I I would hope that it would be easier now for a woman trying to get into engineering than it was for you when you started out like 20 years ago. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I think definitely it's... Uh... It is, but, and there are a lot more women, you know, but the other advantage I think of having that community is that if you do find yourself at an organization, at a company that maybe doesn't have quite that type of culture that you, that you want, that's the best way to, to try to find some place that, that does have that inclusive culture. Right. It's through Um, your connections. Exactly. And that's, that's really how I ended up. um, So currently I'm, as I'm building my financial coaching business, I have gone back to work um, part-time with another firm um, and found that position through one of my friends in the industry who brought me on and kind of went to bat for me um, to, because it is right now I work one day a week in the office and then kind of the rest of the week is just as needed, but probably I, I would say I don't average more than 10 to 15 hours a week at that job. And awesome. um, it's, it's been great because I'm still able to keep those connections with everybody that I've worked with these past 20 years. But I've found that this firm actually, you know, when you and I first met and we had that, that initial one hour call, I think we had, you had helped me kind of figure out that the things that I value in a company that I work for are flexibility, a culture of trust, and being able to be independent. And, you know, just as luck would have it, this position is all of those things. This, so I've just, it was kind of interesting to me when I was going back over my notes for the call today that you know, I came back across that and I realized, oh my gosh, all of those things that I said were important to me that I was looking for in a company are, that's where I'm at right now with this part-time position. So that's kind of, that was a cool realization. I love when that happens. When someone goes back and they look at the lists of all the things they wrote and that they wanted in a position and they get, they find, they find, and it's often like, They didn't even realize it till they go back in hindsight and they find, oh, wow, look at that. Everything I said I wanted, I got. And it wasn't like I had to force it or strive or push. It was like when I got clear on what I wanted and when I maybe like held that standard for myself, things aligned and they worked out. Okay, we had a little technical (laughs) glitch there and we are back. So, Kara, yes. what I really just want to ask you now is how can people find you and connect with you if they are interested in some financial coaching, if they just want to like learn more about you? Maybe they are interested in becoming a financial coach or interested in your engineering experience. Like, I mean, who knows? They could be interested yeah. in a lot of things after hearing your episode. So where can they connect with you? Absolutely. So they can reach me on my website. That is tgl-fc.com. Stands for the Good Life Financial Coaching. And they can also just email me at tgl-fc.com. I'm also on Facebook and Instagram, but I don't really know how to use Instagram. So Facebook's probably better. <laughs> but yeah, Are you on LinkedIn? Any ways. I am. Do you I am on LinkedIn? LinkedIn. I do. That is just under okay. my name. So if you search up Kara Heasley, you will find me. 
Okay, cool. I, I can try to maybe remember in the show notes to link to your LinkedIn too, if people oh, want to connect yeah. with you or send you a message that would be great. and say where you found Kara so she knows who the heck you are. Because if you're a <laughs> random person who's trying to connect with her, she might be like, I don't know you. Say you found um, found, us, found her on Clarity on Fire. And did you not have a discount code that you were going to give people? Yes, I do. Thank you for reminding me. Okay. When we book a discovery session, you have to go through the Q&A call with me first, and then I will send a link to book the discovery session. But discount code CRACHEL will get you $25 off my discovery session. That's awesome. But I like that you do a Q&A session first because you're like, let's just see if I can even help you. And if not, we're right. not going to move any further and we're not going to like waste anyone's time or money. Love Absolutely. That. Yes. If I can provide other resources, point them in a direction, then that's what I'll do. And maybe we'll connect again later. <laughs> cool. Well, I hope you guys will check out Kara um, and her site, tgl-fc.com. The good life financial coaching um, or find her on LinkedIn. And uh, Kara, thank you for coming. And we rode some technical ups and downs today, some dog barking, yes, <laughs> but we got it done. And I'm really glad that we got to do this. It's very cool to see in really just, I mean, I two years is not that long in the grand scheme of things right. to see you here from where you started. It's a really big difference. And I'm just so happy at where you are now. Oh, thank you so much. I'm, I just wanted to say that I, I'm just so grateful. My life is completely different than it was two years ago and I could not be happier. So I really appreciate everything that you did to help me get here. <laughs> of course, I love being part of people's journeys the way that you like being a part of people's journeys. So yes. Okay, guys, uh, leave a comment on this one if you want to. We'd love to hear how this one resonated with you. Connect with Kara if you'd like. And thank you, Kara. Keep me posted. I'll talk to Thanks. you soon. Thank you. Okay. Well, as a reminder, if you want to find or follow Kara online, the best place to do that is her website, tgl-fc.com. If you want some financial coaching by somebody who gets it, Kara is your person. Also, reminder that she's offering anyone who found her through us a discount with the code CRACHEL. But you can have an intro conversation with her first to see if it would even be a good fit before you would then even sign up for anything with her. So I like that, that she's just like, let's get like, like we do, like, let's get on the phone. Let's talk about it. Let's make sure that this is a good fit because otherwise we're not going to like waste each other's time. But then after that, you can save some money if you want to work with her. Um, and I like that her code is Crachel. I feel like you've how made could, it. What, how could you forget? When you are, your celebrity couple business name is a discount code. I take that That's as a That's one way to measure <laughs> if you've made it. There's a lot of others. That's one of them. Uh, that's one of them. I'll uh, take it. Okay. And as always, leave us a comment. Let us know. Did this resonate? There was a lot of pieces of this one that you could that you could have found some insight from or uh, use Kara as <laughs> living vicariously through her for a little while, having her teach you her ways. So le leave us a comment. Let us know what stood out. What are you going to do as a result of what you heard today? Okay, we will be back next Friday with a new side chat. And it's going to be interesting and there are going to be some announcements and there are going to be some revelations. So I you're mean, gonna want to come back titillated, for this one. I don't know what to tell you. You should be. Okay. See you then. See you next week.